Hello, it's Carly McAvoy, and today I'm talking about angle relationships. The first relationship um, that we're going to talk about are vertical angles. Vertical angles are directly across from each other whenever two lines intersect. Vertical angles are congruent, which means their measures are equal. So if you see these two lines that intersect, we have 46 on either side opposite each other. Those are congruent. And then we have 134 this way, and those are congruent. Notice that if this is a straight line, FH, 134 and 46 are going to add up to 180. That means that they're supplementary, right? But across from each other are equal, and next to each other are supplementary. They add up to 180. So in this picture, 1 and 5 add to 180, 2 and 6 add to 180, 1 and 2 add to 180, 5 and 6 add to 180. But what are the vertical angles? Name the pairs of vertical angles shown in that second image. Well, I have um, angle 1 and angle 6. These two are vertical angles, right? What else? I have 2 and 5. Notice I'm just putting the little angle sign in front and then the number. Um, those are the ang vertical angles up top. Down below I have 3 and 8. And over here I have 4 and 7. I don't need to say say the reverse of them in 7 and 4 or 4 and 7. Those are the vertical angles. Okay, corresponding angles. When two lines are crossed by another line, which is called a transversal. So in this picture up here, C is the transversal. Two lines that are crossed by another line. Um, the angles in matching corners are called corresponding angles. When the two lines are parallel, which these are not, but if they were parallel, then the corresponding angles are equal. And that means they're congruent to each other. They have the same measure. Um, parallel lines are lines that never meet, no matter how far you extend them, like the opposite sides of your desk. So looking at this picture, which you can't see. Let me move it up here. Um, find the pairs of corresponding angles. Well, Notice, too, that this down here says M is parallel to N. That tells us that our two lines are parallel, but do you see these arrows that they've drawn on top of the lines? That's another way to show parallel lines. If I'm talking about corresponding angles, they're the angles in matching corners. So angle 1 is corresponding to angle 2. Notice that when you look at this corner and then you jump down here, those are the same corners, right? That means that 3 is corresponding to 4. And that means 5 is corresponding to 6. And 7 is corresponding to 8. So we can find corresponding. They're the same kind of, if you look at the two lines, there's like four little pockets. And the ones that match each other from one side to the next are the corresponding angles. If you were told that the angle of measure, uh, the measure of angle 5 was 110 degrees, we could find the measures of all the other angles. How would you do that? Well, if this was 110, then what would 1 be? Well, it's a supplementary angle. See how this is a straight line? So then 1 would be 70. And you could do the same thing saying, well, 5 is also supplementary to 7. Or you could say, well, 1 and 7 are vertical angles. Either way, we could see that this is 70. And then we know that 5 is a vertical angle to 3, so that's got to be 110. And then once we know that, well, you can use the corresponding to say, well, 1 is corresponding to 2, so that's 70. 5 is corresponding to 6. 3 is corresponding to four and seven is corresponding to seven. So once you know the angle relationships, a little bit of information can take you a long way. Okay, alternate interior angles are the inside angles on opposite sides of the transversal. So in the picture above, the interior alternate interior angles, they are on, here's the transversal, and they're on opposite sides of the transversal, but inside the two lines. So three and six are alternate interior angles. And also 7 and 2, those are alternate interior angles. They're in the interior of the picture, but on opposite sides of the transversal. And they are congruent whenever you have parallel lines. And you can see that that's true. 70 and 70, 110 and 110. Alternate exterior angles are out angles outside on opposite sides of the transversal. So outside the picture, so we're looking on the outside here and the outside there. And they're on opposite sides of the transversal. One and the opposite side on the other 
end here is 8. So 1 and 8, you can see those are both 70. Those are alternate in exterior angles. And then 3 and 4, um, not 3 and 4, nope, 5 and 4. 5 is on the outside and it's on the exterior, it's in the exterior and it's to the right of the transversal. 4 is on the outside to the left of the transversal. So they're on opposite sides of the transversal and they both equal 110. All right, and then this is a, you might end up doing some of this um, in your work, but it's not a big part of what we're doing here, so I didn't spend a lot of time on it, but you could go back and study this if you do end up working with a lot of angles. Using the picture below, list the pairs of vertical angles. Well, the vertical angles are five and seven, six and eight, I'm being really sloppy about the angle notation, one and three, and two and four. So um, what about the corresponding angles? Remember corresponding are like the ones that are kind of in the same place but on the other line. So what number, what angle is in the same place as the seven? Well, the one is. So that would be angle seven and angle one. What about six? That corresponds to four. What about eight? That corresponds to two. And what about five? That corresponds to three. Those are corresponding angles. And then alternate interior, they're in the inside of our picture, but on alternate sides. We have eight and four, and we have one and five. Remember, this is only true because they are parallel, and they didn't show the little parallel symbol here, but they did show you the little arrows on the line to indicate that they are parallel. Alternate exterior, they're on the outside of the picture and on the opposite side of the transversal. Seven and three, and two and six. Okay, given that the measure of angle two is 75, find the measure of the other seven angles. Well, all we need to know is one thing, and we know that this is 75. Well, if this is 75, the vertical angle to that is also 75. And the corresponding to 4 is 6, and that's also 75. And 75 and the 2 and 3 here are supplementary, so if I subtract 180 minus 75, I figure out that this is 105, and the vertical angle to that is 105, and the corresponding angle to that is 105, and vertical to that is 75 and vertical to that is 105. And you can also use other ones. I used um, vertical and corresponding. You could have used alternate interior and alternate exterior to, to solve that and find those same things. Okay, that's it. Have a great day. See you next time.